welcome to another wonderful week. I hope we all enjoyed our weaving class last week. Have you produced your woven mats? Wow, if you have done so, I am yet to see it. Like I said last week, take a picture of your finished work and send it to me in the comment section. I'm going to see it and score you on your work and also to give you feedback on how well you did and areas you need to improve upon on your weaving, okay? Now, if there is any part of it that you're still finding difficult, do not hesitate to send me a message in the comment section, okay? Ask me any question you wish to ask and I'm going to give you an answer. So today, our topic is ceramics. I believe we are all familiar with ceramics because we are always saying ceramic plates, ceramic cups, ceramic this, ceramic that, isn't it? Good. So today we are going to learn a lot more about that. So are we ready? The first thing I want to talk about today is the meaning. What is ceramic? Ceramic can be defined as an inorganic material that has been shaped into a desired form. I am going to repeat that. Ceramics is an inorganic material that has been shaped into a desired form. The word ceramic is taken from the Greek word keramos, which literally means potter's clay. So, ceramics simply means clay. But there's something I would like to clarify here. In the ceramic world, there are different um, materials that are used for creating ceramic products. And these are not, it's not just limited to clay alone. That material can be clay or it can be glass. Like I said before, there are other elements or other inorganic materials that are used are classified as ceramics. But for the sake of this class, I'm not going to mention them because we are strictly working with clay so when we're talking about ceramics we're talking about products that are made with clay or that are made with glass we know what ceramic is that it simply refers to the word clay what is clay clay is a fine grained soil material that becomes plastic when it is wet what do i mean by plastic it has the ability to stretch or take any form it is molded into. I'm going to show you an example now. Here I have a ball of clay in my hands. You can see it is not very, very round and I want it to be round. So what do I do? All I simply do, I can shape it to become a circle. And here it goes. Do you see it? It's now round. If I want it to be any other shape, I can also do that. It can stretch. That's what I mean by its plasticity. When it is wet, that's when it can only do this. If it is dry, it cannot do that. You can see this in my hand. It's just a dry powder. I don't know if you can see it fully. Okay, here it is. When there is no water, it doesn't have that ability again, like this one. No matter what I do to it, it is dry. No matter how hard I press, it's not going to take any shape. So clay is any fine grained material, soil material that becomes plastic when it is wet. What are the characteristics of clay? Like I mentioned before, clay is plastic. Clay becomes hard when it is dry it loses its plasticity what are the characteristics of ceramics how do you recognize them how do you know that this is ceramics now there is a misconception here that i always see people making and i know maybe at one time or the other you may have made it there if you go to the market there is this particular type of plate that is sold in the market very very colorful Okay, let me give you an example now. Do you see the picture there? Okay, now many people refer to this plate or cup, anything that is made with this material as a ceramic. No, please, it is not a ceramic. While it shares some characteristics with ceramics, this is 
lightweight plastic yes that's what it is just plastic but most times we call it ceramic plate it is wrong it's not a ceramic plate it is just a lightweight plastic plate made to look like a ceramic because it's glossy as ceramics how do you recognize a ceramic piece when you see it? what are those characteristics that tells it apart from all other products in the market that may look like it first is that ceramic pieces look very very mm -hmm. glossy now take a look at this you can see the sheen isn't it it's a little bit a little bit shiny do you see it okay here is another one you can see it's shiny okay one of the characteristics of ceramic is that it is very very hard it is very very hard what do i mean by hard clay on its own is very soft but once it is fired or dried at high temperature it becomes very very hard or very strong okay another characteristic of a ceramic piece is that it is brittle what do i mean by brittle it means it easily breaks immediately you drop a ceramic piece on the ground by mistake what happens to it it breaks into tiny pieces so a ceramic is brittle it breaks easily another characteristics of ceramics is that it is a very very good thermal insulator what do i mean by thermal insulator it has the ability to maintain heat ceramics has high resistance to electricity it doesn't conduct electricity doesn't electricity doesn't flow through it that's what it means okay doesn't flow through it so it has a high resistance to electricity that's why you see that it is used most times in our transformers and high tension electricity cables if you look up i'm going to show you a picture later on when we're going to be talking about products i'm going to show you some of them if we have not noticed them before now we are going to know what they are used for so it's it's resistance to electricity what are some ceramic products common ceramic products that we all know includes mugs plates wall or floor towels yes those towels that you walk on in your house especially those ones that makes the place to look beautiful on the walls of the bathroom or on the floor in the kitchen in the parlor wherever it's towed they are all ceramic products toilet seats yes are you surprised you shouldn't be toilet seats the toilets where you go to poo is a ceramic product wash basins also are ceramic products as we all know the wash basin where we wash our hands when it's dirty either at school here or at home in the bathroom they are products of ceramics circuit boards now what do i mean by circuit boards this is circuit boards are usually found in electronic products that phone you are holding in your hand right now using to watch this video or the computer you're using right now the television you watch every time they all have circuit boards i'm going to discuss more on that later the reason why they are used in circuit boards vases flower vases are also products of ceramics some decorative pieces are ceramic products such as this in fact the list goes on and on the list is endless so on your own you can just google it and search for more ceramic products you're going to be surprised that there is a whole lot of things that we use in our daily life knowingly or unknowingly that are ceramic products so what are the important or functions you can say importance you can say functions or you can say uses of ceramics what do we use them for why are they important to the society at large first is that ceramics serves 
useful functions in the society. Let's take, for example, teacups, plates that we all have in the kitchen. They, are all, they all serve a functional purpose in our daily life. And remember I talked about ceramics being used in electricity, right? Good. Now it's used to produce insulators, electrical insulators for electrical parts such as transformers. You can see this one here. You can easily find this in a transformer, okay? Or others are placed in high tension cables so that the electricity will not flow into other parts of the transformer. It's directed straight to where it needs to be. Aside from transformers, most electronic devices like cell phones, televisions and computers have circuit boards and it's highly resistant to electricity. Another function of ceramics is that it serves decorative purposes. Ceramics can sometimes be done just to decorate a place, not for any other thing but to decorate a place. Ceramics also serves as a source of income to those who engage in creating them, like the potters. A person who creates ceramic pieces is called a potter, and it serves as a source of income to a person who engages in creating ceramic pieces. Okay, so now let's talk about ceramic tools. What are some tools that are used for creating ceramic pieces? I'm not going to be talking about these tools. You'll find them in your notes. You'll find the functions of these tools in your notes. So go up there after this lesson and you'll find your notes for you to read up on these tools. But I'll tell you a little secret. Come closer, come closer. You don't really need all these fancy ceramic tools. Don't say I told you, okay? But these tools that you see here, it's the potter in creating a ceramic piece. You don't need them. You can simply use anything you find around the house to serve as to serve the same function as these. Next is equipment. What are some equipments that are needed to make or create ceramic pieces? We have two major equipment I'm going to talk about. The first one is the potter's wheel. What is the potter's wheel? The potter's wheel is just a simple machine that is used by a potter to create ceramic pieces. It turns itself around and the potter puts the clay on the top as it rolls and molds the work or whatever he or she wants on top of it as it turns around. I'm going to show you a very, very short clip now. Please take a look. Now you see what the potter's wheel can do. What other equipment does a potter use for creating ceramic pieces? The other one is called a kin. It is called a kin. What is the kin used for? When creating ceramic pieces, it is usually done with the clay in a wet state. So how does it get dried? That's where the kin comes in. Works are arranged inside a kin to dry them up. And the process of drying in art is called firing. It's called what? Firing. So you see the work here. Can you see some ceramic pieces in this kin? Good. Now the works are arranged in the kin and covered very, very well and heated at a very high temperature. This helps to harden the ceramic Piece. After this process, it is ready for use. To make it more beautiful and glossy like this, another finishing process is applied to it. What do I mean by the finishing process? The finishing process helps to make the work appear very glossy, smooth, and shiny. And that is done 
by applying what is called a glaze. A glaze is still basically clay that has color oxides added to it that is applied to the fired ceramic piece and then it is taken back to the kiln and fired again for a second time. This gives it that shiny texture that we like so much. After it is done, it can be left plain like this or it can be decorated like this either using the hand or machine okay now let's talk about ceramic processes how are ceramic works produced there are three main processes or three main methods for producing ceramic pieces and the first method is the hand building process or the hand building method in the hand building method we also have three different types of hand building methods now the first hand building method is the slab method in the slab method the clay is pressed into a flat shape and then it is used to create whatever it is that needs to be created i'm going to show you a short clip on that now please take a look Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little clip on how the slab process is done. The slab process can be used not just to make plates but any other thing. Here are some of the works that the slab process can be used for. that the slab process is a hand building process right and I said we have three different types of hand building processes so the second one is the coil method the coil method well, how is the coil how are ceramic works made with the coil method all you simply do is get a piece of a piece of clay like this and roll it on a flat surface preferably on wood and then you get a long coil like this and this is what you use in creating your objects here are some works made with the coil method method is the pinch method the pinch method in the pinch method you need a ball of clay and use it to create whatever it is you want to create by pinching it let's assume I want to create a cup with this all I need to do is ball it up and start pinching with my hands what do I mean by pinching I can start with my hole like this okay and I will start using my fingers to build it up the way I want. I'm not going to finish this, okay? Because next week, this is what we are going to be doing. I'm going to show you the entire process of making a pinched bowl or a pinched cup. Here are some pinched ceramic products. isn't it and i believe we are all eager to create something as beautiful as this next week good i will be here to take you through the process 